Now, we all know that defeating terrorism requires a long-term strategy. Border security and law enforcement actions are a significant part of the equation. But even the larger imperative is to persuade and prevent young people from turning to terror in the first place. Otherwise, no matter how many terrorists we bring to justice, those groups will simply replenish their ranks and we will not be safer. We will be involved in a round-robin, circular, repetitive process. This means that our comprehensive strategy has to earn the support of religious authorities, educators, and citizens who discredit hateful doctrines and who are ready and willing to build stronger and more resilient communities. The success will depend on building trust between the authorities and the public and enabling those who are critical of official policies to find a means of voicing their dissent peacefully through participation in a political process. The more united and proud of their institutions the citizens of a country are, the more effective those institutions will be in resisting and fighting back against the agents of terror. This is, we have found, inevitably through history, the imperative nexus between human rights and security. And this, too, will be a major focus of our discussions today. There is no reason in the world the economy of Egypt, which was racing ahead at 7 percent the day that uh, the events of the transition in Tahrir Square took place, couldn't come back quickly to 7 percent. And we want to help you not just do 7, but meet double digits of growth, which we're convinced are waiting for Egypt with the right economic choices.